Well, we've been talking about that this morning. Ontario's new cell phone ban in classrooms is aimed at cutting down distractions. Devices, we know, they're entrenched in many kids' lives. One thing they're likely interacting with on those devices is AI chatbots. Our next guest says that's not entirely a bad thing and there could be benefits. Sinead Bovell is a tech expert who's here with us to tell us why. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so how will kids begin to interact with these AI chatbots on a regular basis? What does that look like? So you can think of AI chatbots as eventually becoming as ubiquitous as our smartphones. They're going to be embedded into our devices. They will be in our homes, in toys, in video games. Eventually, they will be a part of homework. So it will become a part of their their day-to-day -day interactions. So right now, they might have been experimenting with some generative AI systems at home, depending on the parent's level of comfort. But going forward, we can expect chatbots and AI assistants to play a very commonplace role in most of our lives. I'm not I'm not surprised to hear you say that because even if you like if you use any self-help online right now it's typically AI if you use any meta products they were launching that new AI function uh, within their search bar we're already seeing older kids do this as well specifically through social media and uh, snapchat how does that work so this is a big one so most social media platforms including snapchat uh, now meta are baking chatbots right into them. So for instance, chatbot, um, Snapchat has a system called My AI, and it appears just like a friend would in your list of contacts. And you can engage with it, you can ask it questions, uh, you can you know, make up a story together, you can go back and forth. The challenges here, and what I like parents to be aware of, is social media platforms are designed to keep you on their platform as long as possible. So any chatbot that's baked into these platforms is in some ways not aligned with the types of relationships we want kids to have. We don't really want them on social media, back and forth, kind of sucking up more of their time. And there's also been some studies that show some of these chatbots give quite harmful advice. There was an instance with a 13-year-old an experiment done with the Center for Humane Technology and the Snapchat My AI gave it quite uh, scary advice, very harmful advice. We want to make sure parents have oversight here and talk to their kids about how they're using these chatbots, if they should even be using them at all. I think that's an element of social media that we sometimes forget because we don't have to pay to have an account. And so you forget it's a business. And they just want you to stay on because the longer you stay on, the more money they make. Exactly, the more ads they can show you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are some potential dangers? You mentioned the harmful advice that can be associated with AI chatbots. Is there anything else that we need to consider as people who have children in our lives? Yeah, I think the biggest con potential concern with AI chatbots and kids is we don't know what the long-term impact could be of a child attaching to a chatbot the way they attach to a human. So we have to remember these chatbots are designed to sound and feel like you're engaging with a human. And that's only gonna increase going forward. They can validate a child's everyday needs, they can ask questions, they can be a creative partner, but in many ways it could seem like your imaginary friend. But that chatbot, it's a one-way relationship with the child. It's there for you 24-7, but that's not how friendships and human relationships work. They require conflict, negotiation, challenge. So we don't want kids to start to prefer engaging with an AI chatbot that's frictionless over building friends uh, and human relationships in the physical world. So that's something I think parents need to be really aware of. And of course, chatbots can have certain biases. Uh, you want to make sure it's a chatbot that's been designed with kids in mind. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing is making sure children don't start to prefer engaging with AI over engaging with humans. Got to hear you saying all of that. And I'm like, that applies to us as adults too, to keep all of that in mind. There are certain benefits. Uh, we've heard, had educators talk about using this as a tool. What do you say? Yeah, the benefit with AI at chatbots and kids, it's, it's really exciting. So when it comes to the home, we will have built-in tutors that can help kids with homework and learning. And this is going to be essential, especially in homes where maybe reading isn't happening or it's more challenging for parents to help with homework or maybe the schedule's busy or it's a single parent home. So we'll have chatbots that will be capable of assisting students with any type of homework. They can also start to spark creativity. So you could imagine a child being able to engage with a chatbot to pick a different ending to Harry Potter or help me turn this idea I have for a book into a book with pictures and maybe even video. Yeah. So it will start to spark certain aspects of creativity. And then chatbots also aiding the parents and tasks and chores at home to free up more time to actually spend with their kids in the home. Okay, you can see the benefits if you use it correctly. Absolutely. Sinead, great to have you. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.